I had kind of a tough time figuring out where I wanted to place this video in the scope of the course. And ultimately, I decided that right here would be the best place because I believe that this technique of micro sampling, or you could even call it grain sampling, is going to help bridge the gap between what we just looked at with additive and what we're going to be looking at with more things like granular synthesis, wave scan synthesis, and some other just really uh, crazy instruments that are out there where you use a sample as the like sound generator, but it's not really going to sound anything like that original sample after it goes through all of the processes that that instrument is going to put it through. But micro sampling, you could very easily argue, belongs in the sampling section because we are just repurposing some kind of a sample. And here we have this. Wonderful. And you can hear that like so. But micro sampling is exactly what it sounds like. You're going to take a very small piece of this sample and you're then going to use it as the basis for your instrument. And so we could go with a, uh, a loop size that's like this, for example. And when we play this through, that's still too big. Let's go here. So you can hear that like so, and I would never know that that belonged to this entire phrase of wonderful, for example. Wonderful. But if we go in and we make this even smaller, we're eventually going to end up with something that sounds a lot more like a classic oscillator or like one of our drawn in additive um, waveforms that we were then starting with to you know, manipulate and work with in the previous videos. And so to do that, there's some things I can do to make this easier for myself in this program. This is in raw mode right now. And if I go and I just like increase this, it means that it's actually going to be getting less and less of space. So now when we listen, you can see how that sounds a lot more like, you know, an oscillator, for example. And I can go even further and I can come in here and I can take like a really small uh, section and sometimes this, this program's really a pain about this, so I apologize. I'm trying to get it really, really small. And you can hear that like so, and then I can take it and I can drag it around. If I'm very careful. Ugh, this is so annoying. But I can take it and I can drag it around as long as I go forward in the sound. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start this towards the beginning, get myself a very small little sample is just the most annoying thing. I really do apologize. I tried this like 10 times and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Let's try moving forward a little bit in time. And I'm only showing you this for the sake of example as well, but we have this here. Something like that would definitely work nicely. And so just for reference, what I'm going to end up doing here is I'm going to take this, I'm going to split it out, I'm going to consolidate it, and I'm going to then go ahead and uh, bounce this region. And you'll understand why I do that in a second. Okay, so we have that little snippet, but we can do the exact same thing inside of our sampler instrument. So I go bring this back out to its original. I can bring this all back down. No harm, no foul there. And I can then take it and bring it into a sampler. Okay? So when it's in the sampler, I can do something very similar. Wonderful. Wonderful. I can turn our loop on. Wonderful. And I can Wonderful. make a very Wonderful. small loop. Wonderful. 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 Something like that. And as long as I bring this to the front, we're good to go. And I can turn key tracking on. But of course, this isn't going to be tuned. I'd have to bring a spectrum analyzer on to figure out that spot. But let's bring this on. Turn the release up. Just like that is an application of micro sampling and what's fun about this is i can then very easily go in here and like create layers on top of each other and i can like detune these a little bit and we can get a really nice sort of cool sound happening <laughs> And if I want to be really experimental with it, I could go and uh, duplicate this one down, 
take this one and move our loop around to somewhere else. But in this case, we're getting this motion, this first part of the sample before it starts looping. Put up 12. see how much fun that is and that's with us using in fact in this case i'd argue two techniques one is micro sampling the other is just straight up sampling into a micro sample all right so that's something i thought i would show you that would be more on the sampling side of things um but with another instrument we can actually take this a step further and so this is why i created that little micro sample for us because i'm going to be bringing that into serum which is now going to be almost more of like an additive technique. So if we remember what this sounds like, what we're going to see is I can drag and I can bring that in here. If I go into my current project, I find the bounce. Let's see. Is it this one? Wonderful. So it should be this one right here. It's just this little pulse that we've created. And I'm going to drag it. I'm going to bring it in. I have all of these different options. And so you can see that if I was to choose something like FFT 2048, it's going to try to get as many of those overtones as it possibly can. If I go 256, it's going to be a little bit simpler. But with a sound like this, I don't think I need that kind of accuracy. I could also choose some of these other options. But let's just go in here with FFT 1024. All right. And that is what our waveform looks like if we were to see it through some kind of an oscilloscope. But when I turn on Serum here, the amazing thing about this instrument is that almost without fail, it always gets the key tracking right. And then I can go in here and I can look at what I've created. And this is being done with a formula. But I can bring it up and we can then adjust the balance of these overtones. All right. So if I want the fundamental to come through a little bit more, I can obviously bring that up. And oftentimes then I'll go in here and I'll choose something like draw even harmonics only or odd harmonics only. Let's go with odd harmonics only. And then I could come in here and I could try to kind of start emphasizing the odd harmonics just a little bit more to get something that's maybe a little more logical. But this still is micro sampling because we're starting with that sample that then is analyzed by this instrument and is then creating for us our waveform. So it's really like additive in a lot of ways. This is why this technique is really useful for bridging the gap. And so now I have this and I could play with it and we could bring up the span. We might as well. So now I have this span up and we can see how good of a job this done tuning wise. So I'm playing a C and we can see our fundamental is C. The first overtone here is at the next C. So this has key tracked everything just the way I want it. And now if I want to create more of an actual wave table, I could go in here and I could duplicate this over the second time, right? And now if I go into the first one, I go into the second one, I bring it up, I could adjust this. So instead of doing even harmonics only, uh, actually, I don't remember which one I did. Let's do odd harmonics only. And let's do something like this just to adjust things a little bit. And now between the two of them, I'm going to select them. I'm going to morph and I'll just use, you know, the most simple one, the crossfade. And now if we go, we can start, <clears throat> excuse me with that first wave we had that we brought in and edited a little bit and then transition through to the second one. Okay. And we'll be talking about this in greater depth when we talk about wavetable, but uh, we can see that I could adjust that accordingly. 
now here's where it gets fun because instead of having to like duplicate both a uh, bunch of instruments, I can just go in and I can detune them from here. <laughs> And if you remember back to what we did with additive, how we were able to adjust the balance of the harmonics, that's what the, this knob is going to give us the control of. We have a bunch of different options. Let's go bend plus minus. And so why don't we take a couple of LFOs and bring those on. I put this one onto the wavetable position. And let me just go in here and adjust this one. and watch and see what's happening with the uh, wavetable display. All right, I just wanted to show you how easy it is to take a, a technique like micro sampling and then create it into something much bigger um, by utilizing, like, for example, in this instrument, we're utilizing more of an additive technique to generate the actual um, waveform, which is, you know, basically net an oscillator, which we're then able to manipulate ourselves and do some other fun stuff with it. So just thought I would show you that. And um, hopefully you find some really cool and creative applications of this technique as well. And you don't have to take it this far. You can always just stick with your basic samplers and, and do something like we did earlier on in the video. Thanks.